Right, here we are, episode 43 of Merryweather's World. Wow, 43 hours of me staring at a little green dot and talking to you all. Wow, my voice is sounding a bit weird tonight. I am Dr. Mark Merryweather Vorderbruggen, uh, creator of Foraging Texas, author of The Idiot's Guide Foraging, a uh, worker with assorted groups, including Wazoo Survival, who helped me create this wonderful foraging bandana, along with Nicole Ipleon from Histories Alone, and all sorts of other stuff, too. At least I have help. Let me hold this up here, if you can see it. The Herbs uh, Battle Mage Tea. This was specially designed for me. We can see the, here, I'll turn it sideways so you can see the ingredients, and it's all backwards, so let me try it that way. Oh, much better. Okay, so along with the green tea, it has uh, hibiscus and lemon balm, uh, red rose, spearmint, and passion flower. And what this does, this is a mixture of stress reducers and adaptogens, um, just to help me deal with all the crazy stuff I got going on. I think maybe next week will be the Herbs of Power. But tonight we are talking fighting cancer. Uh, it, it's kind of ironic that the, the that's tonight's uh, topic because if you've been following the news, uh, it just came out in the last few days that there has been a drastic drop uh, in cancer uh, diagnoses or, or you know cases of cancer in the United States, um, it, it, in the last two years the, the the chart has just plummeted. The the it's I don't remember the exact percentage, but it was a noticeable percentage of drop or drop in cancer. That being said, you never know when it's going to come up and get you. So we're going to continue on with the show, but it's interesting to think what is going on in America that has suddenly caused a, a plummet in cancer in you know the last two years. And um, other than, I mean, the stock market is through the roof, unemployment is way down, so maybe people are eating healthier, but that would take a, a longer time to, to work out. So kind of interesting. So let's start with something uh, really cool and that is prickly pear. So one of the ways that scientists try and figure out new medicines is they look around at different groups of people, uh, ethnic or ge geological or, or geographical or <laughs> not geological, uh, but see, you know, are there particular diseases that don't show up amongst those people, you know, or at a, a lower rate than the, the, the general population. I mean, that's how the, the big link between uh, well, basically the Amish not having allergies and very little incidences of ADHD and other attention disorder uh, things that led to a big push 10 years ago to start getting people interacting with nature more. Um, but in the case of cancer, there has been certain things that are done. Uh, and one thing it was noticed by researchers yeah. is that the uh, women in the Central America regions and Southwest, uh, especially of uh, Mexican descent, showed almost no incidences of breast cancer. And they thought, well, that's interesting. So they kind of watched them and figured out what was going on. And long story short, they tracked it down to the eating of the fruit of prickly pear. A number of studies now have shown, and I posted links to these studies. Oops, I guess I have to hit, did I hit enter? Oop, there we go. Okay, so prickly pear, the fruit, there's been quite a bit of research that shows that it's actually a very good food to eat if you want to avoid cancer altogether. <laughs> Ain't that awesome? So, like I said, there's a, a number of, of studies that show everything going on with that. Yeah, so 
the, the studies were so strong that they stopped giving pl people placebos and they just said, you know what, it's almost ethically unfair to not be giving people the prickly pear tunas or napoles uh, because it's, it's such an amazing preventative for cancer. So unfortunately, we're past the season for just picking them off the, the you know, the, the cactus for most places around Texas. Uh, you might find some out in the West Texas area. But definitely plant some you know, prickly pear in your yard, gather the fruit where you can. You can dehydrate it. You can, uh, de uh, I'm picturing like a fruit leather. So you, you, you whip it up, you mash it up and you lay it out as a, as a baby food on your dehydrator and dehydrate it into a fruit leather and just nibble some every day. And that alone will have an amazing effect on reducing the incidences of cancer. Um, like I said, initially they found it in regards to breast cancer, but other studies, especially uh, against cancer test cells and so forth, found it. It's actually very effective against a lot of the major types of things like the prostate, the liver, um, skin cancer, things like that. So. Yeah, prickly pear cactus, add that to your food. Okay, uh, Kiri, the fruit or the pads too? The studies mainly focused on the fruit, uh, and I didn't find any that separated fruit from pads or were just pads only. Uh, all the studies I found were on the fruit, and just from a chemical point of view, uh, thinking about the the red color in the fruit, those belong to a class of of chemicals called flavonoids that often show all sorts of really useful medicinal effects. So I'm thinking it really, well, it's very likely that it's limited to the fruit. That being said, there's other health benefits in eating the, the pads. So there's nothing wrong with eating the pads and you, know, you may as well start, who knows? And it's worth doing. Okay, so prickly pear cactus fruit. Really good at reducing your chances of having cancer. So another good one, and if you saw the event link, I'll put this one here, is cleavers. Cleavers, those are those sticky velvet, or sorry, Velcro weeds that are just showing up. Uh, you know, they're a, a cool weather plant here in Texas. And note, if you go to the link there on the Forging Texas website, if you're new here or haven't for some reason ever been to the website, if you click on that, uh, along with information about plant identification and use, uh, it also has a map of Texas of these uh, the counties where the cleavers have been found. So, but they're they're pretty ubiquitous. They're pretty much everywhere. So, I, mean, I need a drink of tea here. Okay. Oh, I should mention. So, the tea I'm drinking this isn't the, isn't the battle. Uh, this is a sleepy time tea, but. From what I was reading about the cleavers, I dug out my my tincture of cleavers in vodka and have been taking about a teaspoon a day of it, uh, my nighttime tea, because, you know, vodka and cleavers and sleepy time tea uh, makes for a decent night's sleep. But yeah, so cleavers. Um, these, not only do they reduce the risk of cancer, which is always good, um, not well, they, they have vitamin C, they're loaded with vitamin C. And so vitamin C in its own right, its antioxidative powers are really good at scavenging free radicals from your body. Free radicals are these really reactive molecules. I like to go in and rip things apart. And if they hit your DNA, they start damaging your DNA and can lead to cancer. So just from their vitamin C content alone, they have a lot of uh, effect towards reducing the chances of cancer. But along with that, there's also other uh, compounds uh, known as phenolics in there that also have really potent, um, like protecting your cells from DNA damage, if you will. 
but the cleaver either as an infusion, so make a tea out of it, or a tincture, uh, is a really good way of taking the cleavers. You don't want to eat them because the stems are kind of woody, and if you know the cleavers, the Velcro weed, the sticky weed, it's really hard to swallow cleavers, and they can get stuck in your throat, and that becomes really uncomfortable. Um, like before, I also included the uh, a, a good paper reviewing the the chemical properties of cleavers, to for you sciency people to see. Um, you know, what's actually doing what there. So I mentioned it helps reduce the, the uh, appearance of cancer. But even now, if you are currently fighting cancer, the cleavers have also been shown through some other mechanisms different from their uh, preventing it. Uh, but cleavers have shown to actually seek out and destroy cancer cells, or compounds in cleavers help kill cancer cells. So um, let, me, let me make something perfectly clear here, though. Uh, there were a number of studies also that showed uh, herbal remedies in general. They're good if you like don't have insurance or something like that. But really where they shine is when they are being used in conjunction with the normal uh, you know, Western science uh, cancer treatments. So, you know, don't stop chemotherapy and start drinking cleaver tea every day. This is something you would add on top of what you're doing already and bring this article and this information to your oncologist to bring them up to speed on it too. Um, just, you know, to have everyone on the same page because fighting cancer, it's not something you do lightly. It's a huge battle and you want everyone involved in the battle to know all parts of the battle. Okay, promise me this. Okay, I'll take that to be a promise. So cleavers, either as a tincture or as a tea, taken every day will help reduce the incidences of cancer. And if you are fighting cancer, it helps um, work in conjunction with the, the normal cancer fighting uh, treatments. So yay cleavers. You can harvest them up until they start getting the little round seed berry type things going on. Um, I would really ideally let them get about 10 inches long and start harvesting them and then air dry them. Remember, air drying helps break down the cell walls. And then, you know, either make a tea or, <coughs> excuse me, a, a tea, you know, use it, make a tea out of it or make a tincture out of it. I like the tincture just, you know, because it's pretty and it tastes good and it goes well in my, my tea. The nice thing about a tincture is you can make herbal teas and then add the concentrated tincture to it, too. So, okay. So, cleavers, really, really good, very common weed out there right now. All right. Uh, Trisha, do you make a cleaver tincture? Yes. So, the way I made it, imagine this jar. There's about three fingers of dried cleaver and then filled up to here with vodka and let it sit for six to eight weeks, shaking it and then straining out the cleavers. And here you go. Okay. Next one. Next one is amazing. And another common plant that's all over East and Central and Coastal and even the Hill Country, I've been finding it, is Heels All, also known as Self Heel. Prunella vulgaris. Um, if you don't have heels all growing in your garden or in your herb spiral or wherever, get some. Absolutely get some. This is this is like the reishi mushroom of the plant world. Heels all. There are pages and pages and pages of scientific documentation on how wonderful heals all is for healing damn near everything um, it really is one of the magic plants if you see the link i i put there um 
it's just a search term on the, the National Center of Biological you know, Institute, uh, the, the plant. I mean, there, there's so many articles, I just got swamped going through them. So yeah, Tina is right, nature's Neosporin. I mean, not only is heels all a very strong antibiotic, antifungal, antiviral, it does damn near everything. But in the case of cancer, First off, uh, it reduces the risk of it. Second, it's been shown scientifically to shrink tumors. So this is really handy, you know, A, if you're you know, fighting a tumor or, you know, especially if you didn't have the tumor discovered in time and that it might be wrapped around something important. There are different drugs that they will give you to try and slowly kill or shrink the tumor some. Uh, where heals all is one of those things that has those compounds naturally. Uh, another thing it does, which is really cool, is it helps slow down or reduce the chance of the cancer spreading. Um, a lot of times that's a problem like, you know, lung cancer or something will spread you know, everywhere else in the body. Uh, you know, the, any of those pancreatic, you know, you might, you might get it out of your lungs, but then a year later or three years later, you find little pockets of it all over the body. So the heel all helps really, uh, helps well with reducing the spread or mes mestatizing. <laughs> These are words I read, I don't get to hear them often. But it reduces the spread of cancer cells through your body and it attacks the cancer cells themselves. So really, really, really amazing plant. Um, I wonder, uh, Ricardo, let me know if he uh, if herbs uh, sells heals all. You can occasionally find it at nurseries. Um, it is in the mint family. So once you plant it, it spreads really well, but you'll want a lot of this. So, you know, that's a good thing that it spreads really well. I got several clusters of it throughout my yard from, man, one single plant over 12 years ago before I started all this. Pretty cool. Okay, Kevin. Uh, so, uh, actually, if you see the thing there, uh, as far as heals all, you can either make a tea out of it, uh, what the herbalists call a tisane, or you can tincture it. Um, because of the flavor, this is one I actually like in teas. I will dry it and add it to tea blends. Um, that's my main way of doing it. You can tincture it. There's no reason not to. But I, I usually tincture the the worst flavor ones and make tea from the better flavor ones. It's as, as simple as that, really, as deciding which to, to go with. Oh, yeah. Tina mentioned with the heels all, it's good on every part of your body inside and out. So definitely something you want to add to your diet, to your regime, to your garden, to your windowsill. Um, great, great, great plant. Okay, any other questions? No. Um, is this useful? Let me know if this is a, a good topic here for you. Okay, next up. Onion. Onion and garlic. Onion and garlic are loaded with all sorts of beneficial uh, uh, compounds, uh, especially a number of different sulfides. Sulfur is, is pretty reactive, and so it's good for you know attacking things and doing things and taking things out. And what's great about onions is and garlic both are the compounds have shown are really good at reducing the risk of cancer. Again, partially because they're so loaded with antioxidants, but also just the uh, other phytochemicals, you know, the organic chemicals in the onions all play a role in keeping the body clean and safe and uncancerified. Yeah, we'll go with that as a word. Uncancerified. You heard it here first on Meriwether's World. So never turn down onions or garlic in any dish, any soup, any burger, any meatloaf, any salad. Make sure you have any cocktail. <laughs> always include onion. You should you should always have onion, uh, you know, every day. That might be something, you know, 
maybe every other day if you spend a lot of time in elevators or in tight carpools. Um, but in general, yeah, just the adding onions and garlic to your diet goes a long way towards protecting you from cancer. Isn't that cool? Something you probably already want to eat and just never think to do it. Now you have another reason to do it. Oh, okay. Good thing you're taking notes there. Kevin Rust. Onion texture. Yum. Uh, I believe that's called a martini. No, no, it's a... What is it where you swap the olive with a with an onion? I don't remember. Is it in Manhattan? Oh, well. Yeah, so, so add onion, add garlic to your meal. And, you know, maybe not breakfast, but, you know, supper is a good place for it. And let it do its magic. <laughs> or going to, yeah, yeah. I guess it depends if you like your dentist or not. If you don't like your dentist, yeah, go ahead and have, a, you know, a gar uh, like an onion and Limburger liverwurst sandwich before going to see him or her. But uh, if you like your dentist, yeah, go go with the heels all. So, okay. Yeah, so Patricia, garlic helps you live long. Garlic and onions are one of those things, again, that um, are as much medicine as food. I mean, they're antibacterial. Um, they have some liver strengthening effects. They, they do a lot of good in your body. You know, the, the main problem is if you eat too much of it, you start to smell like an onion. So, you know, that's why there's a, a mixture here. Oh, that brings up another thing. It's good to use a mixture of a lot of different things because every person's biochemistry is different. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's potential cancers are different. So, you know, having like a rotate through one day you have the heels all, another day you have onion, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Another day, cleavers. Every day have the prickly pear, though. Um, you you help build up a huge wall to protect your body from these cancers. You have all these different things in there, ready for battle and fighting different aspects of different types of cancers. So food diversity, herb diversity, plant diversity, it's a good thing to have, especially from a health point of view. <laughs> yes, uh, Patricia. Tequila makes you feel like agave is the best plant in the world. I cannot argue with that. I'm a big fan of tequila. Oh, cool. Jane, yeah. Her granny had uh, green onions every meal, and she lived well into her 90s. There we go. Anecdotal evidence. Um, okay, so onions, garlic, really, really good things. So here's one that's going to surprise... Y'all, Spanish moss and ball moss. These are cool. So, you know, uh, throughout the south, the long, drapey, gray Spanish moss hanging from the oak trees and making everything spooky looking. Interesting plant, not a parasite. It is not taking anything from the tree except some real estate on a branch. It's not a parasite. It's not taking any nutrients. It's not putting little, you know, like it or a little plant vampire teeth in there and sucking anything out. It's getting all its nutrients from the air and the dust uh, around. So in the water, uh, you know, the, the morning dew and so forth, the plant itself, the Spanish moss and the ball moss, they are in the bromeliad family, bromeliads. Uh, a very common bromeliad is the pineapple. That being said, the Spanish moss and ball moss do not taste anything like a pineapple, which is really unfortunate. They just taste more or less like paper or sawdust. But from a cancer-fighting point of view, uh, some really interesting study has been done on that. First, again, a, a dose of it, almost daily dose or every few days of it, does reduce the risk of cancer occurring in the first place. So, you know, it's always better to nip it in the bud before it appears than to fight it later. Um, but in the uh, certain cases where the cancer does develop, especially in leukemia and prostate cancers, the 
infusion, uh, so a tea or tincture made from the Spanish moss or the ball moss, has been shown to help fight that. So again, it would be taken in conjunction with your normal uh, leukemia treatments or your prostate cancer treatments. Don't just drop those and switch over to ball moss. Uh, and like I said before, you want to discuss this, take these links I've posted to your oncologist or your doctor and say, hey, what about this doc? Um, and hopefully they'll be open enough, open minded enough to read through the research and go, whoa, this is very interesting. That's my imitation of a doctor. <laughs> okay. So Spanish moss, just collect it from the tree, chop it up, throw it in vodka, throw it in tequila, something like that. Um, and one thing you can do is you can mix like Spanish moss and cleavers. In that case, so you would, you know, going back to the cleavers, you know, do like this much cleavers and that much Spanish moss and then fill the top with vodka. Uh, dried cleavers, dried Spanish moss. So after you harvest it, uh, in the case of cleavers, or sorry, in the case of Spanish moss, you can't just air dry it. You can't just hang it and air dry it <laughs> because that's how it lives. You actually do have to kind of heat it up for a bit, throw it in an oven for, you know, at like a 125, 130 degrees for just a little bit. Try and uh, wilt it some and then let nature take its course then and let it kind of dehydrate, then make the tincture out of it or the tea. So that's a good one. I mean, there's so much of it around. It's real easy to collect. Most people will have no problem with you say, you know, collecting Spanish moss. So, you know, go forth and, and get healthy there. All right, I'm going to look and see uh, what questions are? Uh, yep, Kevin Marshall, Black Eyed Peas, Big Wedge of Purple Onion. Uh, any of the colored fruits and vegetables usually have a higher potency than the non-colored one. So yeah, purple onion is a good thing. Uh, prickly Perry Jelly Work, Kevin. No, I, one of the things, um, this is what I call a scientific wild ass guess. So science, or a guess with some science behind it. But in the case of prickly pear jelly, you would not have the skin. Um, I think really a leather, you know, after, you know, pulp it, remove the seeds and turn it into a prickly pear leather, you're going to get a bigger collection of the chemicals than you would just by making a jelly out of it. All right, ball moss grows on oak trees around me. So you got anti-cancer there. Uh, ah, I'm going to screw up your name here, Aurelia. Yeah, six large white onions peeled in a crock pot with a cup of honey. That's a, a very basic form of uh, fire cider type stuff. But yeah, uh, onions and honey together. There's all sorts of beneficial, you know, uh, uh, infection fighting powers in, in honey. And so combining them with the onions is it's, it's kind of funky taste, but yeah, it's very potent. Trisha. Yeah. You want to try and dry the ball moss some to break it down or just put it in a food processor and chop it up. Like I said, just hanging it somewhere to air dry doesn't work because it'll just keep growing. So you do uh, ball moss and Spanish moss is one of the cases where you really would use a dehydrator to kind of drive the moisture out and then just chop it up really well. Okay, so Spanish and ball moss reduces the risk of cancer, fights leukemia, fights prostate cancer. So really, really good plant. Next one is another common field weed that's just kind of starting to pop up now. And that is curled dock. So curled dock, in this case, you want the root. And here's the thing. With the curled dock, you want to age the root for a long time. So after you dig up the, the curled dock and rinse the, the dirt off it, just leave it intact. It looks like a big yellow carrot. 
and just hang it somewhere to dry. There's all sorts of chemistry still going on in the root. There's different enzymes and so forth that are converting molecule A into molecule B. And what you really want here is molecule B. So if you can let the curled dock root just dry for a year before making a tea or tincture out of it, you'll have much better results than just digging it up and drying it for you know six weeks, two months. So beyond a year, eh, then you run the risk of it mildewing and so forth. So, um, but wait at least six months, eight months would be better. A year would be really good, but leave the entire root someplace cool, dry, dark. Check on it every so often to make sure there's no mildew forming on it. Uh, you want to have it on a rack so air can flow around it, um, but you want to let it just sit there out of the ground the top leaves cut off and doing its biochemistry inside the still living root cells. Uh, once that's done, you know, six, eight weeks, uh, sorry, six, eight months, a year, then you can make the tincture or the tea, aka tisane, out of it. And with it, um, so it reduces the risks. It has some really potent antioxidants beyond vitamin C, but also some phenolics and other things that are really good at preventing the damage from occurring to your DNA. Um, it also has been shown, oops, okay, yeah. It also has been shown to help shrink tumors. So uh, this is really good, especially uh, like if you've had a tumor removed you know, they usually take a whole bunch of material around it. You know, when I had a, a, a potential skin cancer on my foot, it was a tiny little dot, but they took something that, you know, bigger than a quarter out of the bottom of my foot. That was really painful. Um, but if they miss something or if some of the cells have migrated out of that incision zone, uh, the tumors can come back. So the curly dock will help prevent the regrowth of tumors and help shrink tumors that are there. So again, use it in conjunction with everything else uh, that your oncologist and uh, you know, the Anderson Medical Center and all that, uh, Memorial Health, whoever is you know, doing to treat your cancer. Show the doctor the articles. I'm going to keep harping on that because this is important. Like I said, in a battle as important as this, you want all the generals to know what's going on. So you'll be surprised how uh, a lot of doctors are, are kind of starting to take a second look at these things. And if you can bring them these scientific journal articles, uh, I mean, that's what they're designed. They are, you know, the doctors, they, they are scientists in a way, and they, they got to look at the science and they'll probably win them over. Um, yeah, so curl doc, dry it, and then use it to reduce the risk of cancer and to help shrink tumors that have already formed. So another good one, but it is kind of slow. Um, as far as here in Texas, when to harvest it, uh, for the root, ideally you want to harvest it when you start seeing the stalk coming up. Because when the stalk is coming up, uh, that means a lot of the energy is now going to be transferred over to uh, growing the seeds for the curled dock. So the root is pretty much maxed out as far as what it's going to be loaded with. So once you see the stalks, you know, about a foot tall, dig up the plant, clean off the root, take the leaves and the stalk, eat those, chop them up, you know, make sauerkraut or eat them. They're good food. Um, and then just, like I said, store the root on a rack somewhere in a cool, dry, dark place and just let it dry naturally. Okay, looking here. Uh, Kevin Marshall. So French onion soup, besides being a good meal for diabetics, is good cancer preventative. This is true. A dose of Spanish moss tincture and brandy would be a really good thing. Yes. Uh, a Spanish moss tincture, The if you look at the articles, it, it's actually very, very potent. So uh, it's a very, very powerful anti-cancer agent. Um, some of the the words in the articles, I don't remember exactly, but it was along, you know, scientists rarely use the word shocking results in 
uh, scientific articles, but the equivalent were in these with the Spanish moss. Uh, so, uh, Dion, so once the curly dock root has dried six, eight months a year, then chop it up into really fine pieces. You know, if you have a coffee grinder, you know, chop it into coffee bean sized pieces and then run it through the can, uh, the coffee grinder to get the real fine pieces. And then you can make a tea out of it. Use uh, about half a teaspoon in a cup of hot water or uh, it's it's kind of bitter so this is one that i find is best tinctured again so you would use the the chopped up root and again on like a quart jar three fingers of the uh, root and then fill up to like the the shoulder here with a vodka or brandy or tequila or you know any of those okay I'm just going to scroll back. Any other questions? I think I'm... Oh, wow. I miss Minnie Weather. She's at... Like I said, she's at soccer. But uh, I'm kind of getting used to running this without her. Next up, this is one for you people over on the coast. Over in the lovely beaches of Texas. Sargassum seaweed. You know that seaweed that's washing up? It's amazingly medicinal. And again, it's one of those that um, there were so many articles on its cancer fighting abilities that I just said, you know, just look up sargassum cancer and take your pick of the type of cancer you're dealing with or preventing it or anything like that. So, um, what was I going with? Okay, I, I'm sorry, I was distracted here for a second. So, Chad, I've been posting the links here. Uh, and then they will be eventually, a lot of this is stuff I've just figured out in the last two weeks, and it has not been added to the Foraging Texas, but eventually it will get there. Gene, uh, uh, metastatic colon cancer. So uh, colon cancer, actually you, perfect timing here, if there can be such a thing as perfect timing with cancer. Yeah, the seaweed, uh, the colon cancer is one of the things that it's been shown to help with here. So the sargassum seaweed as an infusion or a tincture or chopped up in as a salad. Now, here's just a, a side note. Uh, most of the beaches in Texas, it is illegal to collect the seaweed from the beach because it is a necessary component of the beach ecosystem. That being said, legally, they can't do anything if you're taking it out of the water. Um, so if, you know, you're out splashing around in the, the Gulf, uh, picking up clumps of seaweed there and putting them in a bag, you're okay. Once it makes it to the beach, uh, my understanding is that now it's illegal because the, the, the rules and laws I found said you can't take it from the beach. It doesn't say anything about taking it from the water. But if you go to the link I posted here for the sargassum seaweed, you'll see which one it is. It's the brown stringy one uh, that's you know, all over Galveston and everywhere all along the coast. It's pretty much the only seaweed we get along the Texas and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, if you go out into the more of the Caribbean Sea, they have the, they have the sargasso sea where they have this huge you know, square miles filled with the seaweed. That's where it's coming from. It's getting washed into the Gulf of Mexico. But once it's here, amazingly good at reducing the risk and shrinking tumors, but all sorts of other things too. I just took those two because those are the two most common. But again, if you follow the link and just start scrolling through there, eventually you'll probably, or even uh, Gene, if you, uh, at the link, there's a search uh, feature and you can type in sargassum colon cancer and see what research has been pulling up or has been done on it. But uh, from what I remember going through it, there definitely was information on that. Ooh, wow. This is going fast. Okay, next one is one you hear me talk about in classes a lot because it's a great one. And actually, uh, 
Gene, this would be another good one for you. The reishi mushroom. So most of the scientific research on the reishi mushroom has been done on the uh, Ganoderma lucidum, which isn't the one we have here in Texas. Uh, we have two other that are in it. Um, but some preliminary results, from my understanding, is a lot of the same compounds are in them. And so... Ideally, for the best results, you would probably want to buy the the Rishi, the Ganoderma lucid, uh, lucid, uh, lucidum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tina is giggling right now. Uh, you know, the that way you know you have the one that has the most studies on. But if you can't afford it, or you know, if you're looking the the Rishi mushrooms, follow the link on Foraging Texas there. You'll see pictures of it. It's a very common summertime mushroom across the southern part of Texas. Uh, so southeast Texas, through the Houston area. Um, I haven't found it in the Austin area. I've heard reports of it down in more of the southern and the valley, uh, mainly around oak trees and other hardwood trees. Uh, one of the things, though, is it does require both heat and wet. So it's more likely to show up in areas that have a higher humidity, lots of rain, shaded, woodsy sort of areas. But it is a really, 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 really good, good, good mushroom. Um, so uh, two main things it does is reduces the size of tumors. And it also protects the healthy cells from chemotherapy. If you remember chemotherapy, it's basically a race of poisons trying to poison the cancer before poisoning the healthy cells. So there's different things in the Rishi that have shown to help protect the healthy cells from the chemotherapy drugs, but the cancer cells don't get the same protection. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you go to the website there, the the Forging Texas, you'll see the technique for doing it is what's called a double extraction, where you take the reishi and soak it in alcohol for six to eight weeks, and then you boil it in water and then combine the two together. All the details are over there on Forging Texas, um, but that's the way you get the alcohol-soluble and the water-soluble components of it. Um, but lots of good research on the Rishi as far as anti-cancer type stuff. Um, there, were, what, there was, going back, uh, where was it? Do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gene, I'm going to toss you another link here. I'm going to apply to you right now. So... The spreading cancer, the one of the best to dealing with cancer that's in the process of spreading or may be about to spread or has spread is the heels hall. So I posted that to you. Uh, Joe, can you use a freeze dryer or dehydrated reishi mushroom? Yeah, the dehydrated and the frozen uh, freeze dried reishi mushroom are perfectly acceptable. The different compounds you want are still going to be in there. Um, Remember, the mushrooms are not plants. They do not have a cellulosic cell wall. They have more of a, you know, almost like a human membrane type cell walls or cell membranes. And so you don't have to do that whole drying in the air so the enzymes can chew it apart. Uh, once it starts to dry, it really does break apart quite easily. Okay, wow, 8.56. So let's bring this back here. We are getting close to the end of another episode of Merryweather's World. So words of advice, plant diversity. You know, I gave you a whole list, especially things that uh, reduce the risk of, of cancer from occurring in the first place. A lot of them are easy to find out in the wild or from herbal shops or from grocery stores, nurseries, uh, herbs, you know, the, 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 the one of tonight's sponsors, you know, the 
person who made this, Sparks Magic Battle Mage. So yeah, there is no reason not to to incorporate these sort of foods in your diet. Um, you know, like the saying goes, let food be your medicine. This is great medicine here, folks. And like I said, being a scientist, I needed the scientific proof. And so I dug up the scientific proof for you. So you too can have that proof and you can go through there and see, hmm, okay, I'm convinced. So very cool. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, you, I'm too busy. So Kevin Russ, good luck. I've been trying to give him a long view for three years. I am insanely busy. I am insanely busy. It's crazy. I was reading this uh, article, you know, and I opened up the web browser and it said, you know, the five habits of things that people get, you know, get a lot done. And I thought, oh, good, I need this. And I looked at it and it's like, I already do all those five. I need more. <laughs> I need cloning technology. But so be it. Okay. 8.58. I'm going to shut this down two minutes early. Um, but next week, yeah, the, the, the whole thing about herbs to help you with endurance and strength seems to be uh, a good topic. So let's, let's, I'm thinking that's probably what next week will be. <laughs> okay. Uh, at that point, good night all. I really need to shut this down. <laughs>